Assalamu alaikum, <coughs> respected chair person and respected panelist. Uh, my talk is device therapy in heart failure. Heart failure is defined as a systolic and diastolic heart failure. And <coughs> systolic is mainly impaired contact entry. It is about more than 70% of the cases. And diastolic is, <coughs> is impaired feeling and it is about 30% of the cases. And New York Heart Association classification we have no class 1, class 2, 3, 4. Class 1 is no limitation of physical activity and class 4 is symptomatic at rest in between class 2 and class 3. <laughs> this is the newer classification we know about heart failure. Heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, heart failure with mildly reduced, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. This is a newer guideline. The newer management <coughs> of the heart failure according to the ESC guideline, there is four fillers, AC inhibitor or RNE, and beta blocker, MRA, and, R and HGL2 inhibitor, and diuretics. This is the class one indication. And if the ejection fraction is less than 35%, QRS duration less than 30%, and in that case is ICD indication. It is non-ischemic class 2A. If it is ischemic, it is class 1. And if the ejection fraction is more than 35%, device therapy not indicated or inappropriate. In that case, we have to go for class 2 cl <coughs> recommendation. If the patient is sinus rhythm and ejection fraction is less than 35%, QS duration is more than 30, 130 millisecond. And in that case, device therapy is indicated, CRTP or CRTD. This is my topic. This is the, if the patient has heart failure and QRS duration more than 130 millisecond and patient is in sinus rhythm and uh, ejection fraction less than 35% after optimal medical therapy, this patient needs device therapy, CRTP or CRTD. This is my today's topic. Interventricular conduction delay, general proportion is 15%. If the patient has white QRS complex, in that case, the interventricular conduction and delay is 30%. And it gives mortality in presence of white QRS. If the QRS complex gradually widen, you have seen here, the more the QRS duration and the mortality is in increase. So if the QRS duration is wide, patient mortality become increased. An increased mortality rate with patient with because of LBB. LBB is white QRS complex. You can see here, the patient with LBB with heart failure, there is an increased mortality. And also sudden cardiac death. In patient with white QRS complex, there is a ventricular dysynchrony, mainly interventricular dysynchrony, atrioventricular and interventricular dysynchrony. And abnormal ventricular conduction result in mechanical DNA, white QRS, Typical LBB morphology, it causes poor systolic function and impaired diastolic function. This is the element of cardiac dysynchrony, this is atrioventricular and intraventricular and interventricular. This is the mechanical dysynchrony. What are the clinical consequences of mechanical dysynchrony? Abnormal interventricular septal motion, that is septum and lateral wall is not incoordinated. The septum is contracted first and lateral is delayed contraction. And reduced pulse pressure, reduced ejection fraction, cardiac output, diastolic filling time, and produced diastolic MR. <coughs> the cardiac resynchronization therapy or CRT is the treatment of choice in patient with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, white chaos complex, and <coughs> it causes improved, improved hemodynamics, improved quality of life, improved survival, and and improve mortality. Cardiac resynchronous therapy, that is, it is coordinated activation of the ventricle and septum. That is, left ventricular septum and lateral wall movement coordinated. This is the mechanism of CRT or desynchronization. You can see here, in the left panel, you can see and the animation, the septum and lateral wall is contracted simultaneously and the uh, right panel there is a dilated and the septum and lateral wall. The septum is the septum and lateral wall 
septum contracted first and lateral wall is compacted delay. So there is a in case of dilated cardiomyopathy with QRS, white QRS, this is the descent crony. There is septum contracted first and lateral wall contracted delay. Uh, you can see here in the also in the echocardiogram, we can see also this is the left panel, this is the concern, lateral wall and septum contracted simultaneously. In patient of dilated cardiomyopathy, the septum and lateral wall is contracted, <coughs> this one, the septum first and lateral wall is contracted later on. So there is an incoordinated motion from septum and lateral wall. In mechanism, in, the, in Dilated cardiomyopathy before CRT, mm -hmm. the septum is contacted first and the lateral load is contacted delay. And after CRT, you can see here septum and lateral load is contacted simultaneously. This is the proposed mechanism of CRT implantation. Uh, the indication of uh, CRT in EST 2021 guideline, the CRT is recommended for symptomatic patient with heart filler, sinus rhythm, QRS duration more than 150 millisecond, ejection fraction less than 35 percent, <coughs> despite optimum medical therapy. This is the class 1 indication. If the QRS duration more than 150 millisecond and patient is sinus rhythm, class 1 indication, this is the class 1 indication. And class 2 indication and the ejection fraction less than 35 percent and the uh, QRS duration 130 to 140 millisecond and LV morphology after op optimal medical management. This is the class 2 indication of CRT. Non LVB is a class 2 B to I U indication more than 150 millisecond. If the QRS duration, this is just one uh, two A indication, and if the QRS uh, the duration is 130 to 140 millisecond, 49 millisecond, this is class 2 B indication. If the QRS duration less than 130 millisecond and CRT is contraindicated. This is a new <coughs> in this guideline and that is the patient with complete heart block or advanced heart block ejection fraction less than 40 percent patient should be uh, not pacemaker patient should be implanted by ventricular pacemaker or CRT because if we put this uh, dual chamber pacemaker patient will gradually develop heart block, heart play, fatal failure. So this is the new in the guideline. And patient with atrial failure, atrial fibrillation, in this case that is the ejection fraction less than 35 percent and class 3 to 4 heart failure and QRS duration 130 millisecond. In that case, a heart failure level 2A is the indication of the uh, indication of CRT in patient with atrial fibrillation. In patient with symptomatic AF and uncontrolled heart rate who are candidate for AB junction, the irrespective of kiosk company, these are new in the guideline. This patient with atrial failure, atrial fibrillation, or heart failure, and QRS duration is narrow, and can, patient rate cannot be controlled by the drugs, and this patient is candidate for AB junction ablation or abdominal ablation. This patient is, and <coughs> that is the patient with ejection infection less than 40 percent, the CRT is negative class 1, go on. And CRT rather than the RB pacing should be considered in patient with heart failure with mild reduced heart and RB pacing should be considered in patient with heart failure with bizarre ejection infection. CRT may be considered in patient with heart failure with bizarre ejection infection. So if the patient has AF and heart rate cannot be controlled, so in that case heart failure with reduced ejection infection and heart failure with bizarre ejection infection we can implant CRTP. These are new in the ASC guideline. Uh, this is the algorithm I also discussed. These are also new in the guideline. Pacing in the acute myocardial infarction, entry MI, patient with complete heart block, and <coughs> this patient should undergo not permanent pacemaker. This patient should undergo CRT, and this is class 2B indication. These are the new guy in the guideline. And <coughs> patient indication of uh, contacting system pacing or his bundle pacing in heart failure. If the patient is not suitable for that is the CRT, that is coronary sinus is not suitable and for implantation of CS lead or unsuccessful, in that case his bundle pacing or left bundle pacing is the option, is class 2A indication. And patient with 
indication of CRT, P or D. This is the, you should share decision. This is a patient with indication of CRT. We can implant non-ischemic patient CRT, P and ischemic patient CRT, D. And there is a lot of things uh, in favor of CRT, D. There is a lot of debate. Uh, there is some uh, call in favor of points, non-ischemic uh, cardiomyopathy, CRT, P, uh, short expectancy of life, major comorbidity, poor renal function, patient preference. These are the points in favor of CRTP and patient with uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy should be implanted CRTD. Uh, cardiac venous anatomy is the more important for implanting. This is the issue of choice in the lateral vein. This is coronary sinus, this is the lateral vein, this is the target vein for the <coughs> LBLD implantation. And CRTP, there is three lead, one in the atrium, one is the right ventricle, and there is the left ventricle through the coronary sinus. That's the biventricular pacemaker. Uh, there is patient preparation uh, as like a permanent pacemaker, but one should remember patient should be stable at least one month, otherwise patient will develop heart failure in the during implanting table. Uh, this is the one of the major uh, st first step of implanting CRT, that is cannulation of the coronary sinus. There is a lot of uh, procedure, lot of uh, <coughs> oh, I usually use the, uh, that is the EP catheter to cannulate the coronary sinus and sometimes I use the coronary sinus sheath. Uh, this is by coronary sinus sheath we can use cannulate the coronary sinus. You can see here in yellow view this is the EP catheter going to the coronary sinus and RA view it is coronary sinus. This is the and there is a, this is the sheath here. So this is the cannulation technique of the coronary sinus. After cannulation, we have to <coughs> include the balloon sometimes, that is coronary sinus venogram. There is balloon is implanted here, we can see the vein of the coronary sinus, the lateral vein. So this is target vein in the lateral vein, not in the middle cardiac vein. Uh, these are the leads. Initially, these are the bipolar LV lead. Now improve the uh, responder. Now we have the quadrupolar lead. There is the uh, there is uh, S shaped straight and the uh, what is called this the uh, uh, there is a S shaped in the St. Jude's uh, they have the uh, metronic there is three shaped straight shape S shaped and is the uh, carp shaped lip in the uh, at LB lead and after implantation after a venogram and we put the lead in the coronary sinus and then we put the lead in the uh, LV system, LV lead. So there is a LV lead, RV lead, and RA lead. So this is the complete uh, procedure. Two after minutes left. After implantation, this is the patient with complete heart block and uh, RV pacing. After implantation of CRT, there is a narrow QRS complex. There is a ECG of the uh, patient up, after biventricular pacing, the sinus system. RB pacing, LB pacing, and biventricular pacing is the narrow pacing. And this is the implantant technique. Uh, that is the technique of the implantation. This is the coronary sinus cannulation. You can see here coronary sinus cannulation by the CS catheter. The contrast is injected in the venogram. RB lead and then the <coughs> RA lead and then the LV lead. You can see here, this is the LV lead is the over the OR. This is the OR is in the target vein and over the OR lead in the, the this lead, lead is coming. <coughs> after implant, there is a 30% patient after his implant is a non-responder. So there is a non-responder 30% and responder and super responder, 10 to 20 percent is the super responder. How to improve the responder? There is a lot of cause of uh, non-responder. You can see here the subapnea may be delay, arrhythmia, anemia, and <coughs> lead position is the most of the causes of the non-responder. How to improve the non-responder? There is a lot of, I think that is the adaptive CRT. We can see only adaptive CRT, only that is atrial synchronized left ventricular facing. Normally, LBI is pacing in the contraction with the, there is the biventricular electric pacing. You can see here, 
this is the RB passing through the normal conduction and LB passing through the LB lead. So it is called adaptive LB. You can see here one of my patients before CRT, white QRS, after adaptive CRT, there is narrow QRS, looks like normal. And another is the sink LB CRT. You can see here, this is by B passing. This is LB and RB is contacted simultaneously. And sink LB, this is the one of the algorithm. You can see here, that is the atel sinus conduction, uh, LB, RB, and normal conduction. So it is the you call sink LB conduction. It is a, this is only LB conduction. One of my patient is a complete heart block with pacemaker, white QRS, and this is the after seeing KB, this QRS complex become more narrow. <coughs> Conclusion in my patient with heart failure with class 3, 2, 3 ABF, systolic dysfunction with intervening conduction delay, CRT is safe, well tolerated, improved quality of life, function class, and exercise capacity. Or improved cardiac structure and function, improved heart failure, composite response, and patient improved mortality. Thank you very much for patient sharing.